All right, we are going to go ahead and graph the function on this one. Um, well, we know that we need to figure out our domain and range. On this, to find out your domain, or the values that you can choose to put into that function, you know you can't have zero in the denominator, so you take that denominator, set it so that it can equal zero, and you get, if you were to solve that, you get x equals zero. So your restriction is x cannot equal zero. So I would just go ahead and make a t table. And it's undefined at zero, so you're going to have an asymptote there. So you can choose any value but zero. So is the graph continuous? No, because you can't draw anything when it hits zero. If you were to make and plot those points then, this is what your graph is going to look like. The range is y is greater than zero. And you can get that off of your table as well, that none of your numbers are going to be negative. So the same thing. Here, the domain, you have a restriction. X cannot equal zero. Because if you were to look at that denominator, you're not allowed to have zero underneath. So if I make my t table, I can probably choose a couple numbers that are bigger than zero and a couple numbers that are smaller. And then when you graph it, you're going to get something that looks like this. So what is the re range? Well, your range is everything except for what that asymptote is. Okay? And your asymptote is actually going to be shifted down one unit here. So all numbers, but y does not equal negative 1. And it is not continuous. So right along here is your asymptote, horizontal. Number three, you need to solve those. Well, what I would do is start by squaring both sides to get rid of that radical, and you're left with zero equals x plus one, x equals negative one. Here, before you square both sides, you want to get that radical by itself. So you're going to square both sides now that you've got that radical by itself. Remember to FOIL, that's where the x squared minus 4x plus 4 comes from. You want it set equal to 0, factor, and you get x equals 3, x equals 2. You want to plug those back in and make sure that you did not create any extraneous solutions, which we did not. On C, I went ahead and I subtracted 5 from both sides because I need to isolate that radical, and it equals negative 2. Well, I know a square root is never going to equal a negative if I'm getting a real solution. So on this one, no real solution. Because I could never take that square root and get a real number. On 4, don't overthink this one. The zeros are your highest power, and the turning points is one less. So for A, you've got three zeros, two turning points. There's my highest power, three zeros, two turning points. And on the last one, two zeros, one turning point. On number five, they're looking for end behavior. Um, my end behavior here is up, down. So as x approaches infinity, which would be the right-hand side, f of x, which is the same thing as y, approaches negative infinity because it's going down. Here, as x approaches negative infinity, which would be the left-hand side, your y is going up, so it's going to be approaching infinity. A and b are really the same thing because they both have odd degrees with positive leading coefficients. 
on C, the end behavior is down, down. So both on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, Y is going to be going downward. So on number six, you want to state the multiplicity. Well, I factored out an X squared, and if I set that equal to zero, both of those X's are going to equal zero. There's a multiplicity of two because there's two of them. And then I'm also going to get negative four-fifths and positive four-fifths. The end behavior here is going to be going up, up. I should have three turning points. And I'm just going to do a very rough sketch of this. So there's zero in the middle. There's five-fourths. And I'm going to call this negative five-fourths. So it's crossing at your zeros. If you remember on a double root, it just touches it, bounces off. So your graph would look something like that. On number seven, you want to divide using th synthetic division. When it has parentheses, you put the opposite one in the box. So bring down your two, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. And hopefully I did that one very quickly. I didn't make any mistakes. Your answer is always going to be one degree less. So I'm going to have two x to the fourth minus four x cubed minus 7x squared minus 5x, I'm sorry, that should be a plus 5x, plus 1, remainder 10. On number, the second part here, I'm going to put 5 in the box, bring down your 1, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, Add, multiply, add. And on that one, I'm going to be left again with one degree less. So x cubed plus 4x squared plus x plus 2 remainder negative 9. And again, I hope I didn't make any mistakes because I'm going very quickly on these. On number 8... You have to think back and remember that an imaginary never travels by itself. It's always going to have its conjugate as a buddy. So on that one, you're also going to have negative i. So what I would usually do is multiply the, these first two together, and you get x squared plus 9x minus 20. That's not right. I tried to do that in my head. You get x squared minus x minus 20. And when you multiply these out, I'm going to go ahead and foil the whole thing. x squared minus xi plus xi minus i squared, and you need to remember that i squared is the same thing as negative 1. i squared is the same thing as negative 1. So when you do that then, you're going to be left with those middle terms cancel, and you get x squared plus 1. And then you need to FOIL that whole thing out again. Um, x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 20x squared plus x squared minus x minus 20. Combine your like terms together, and you're going to get x to the fourth minus x cubed 
minus 19x squared minus x minus 20. Um, on B, I don't know that I'm going to go ahead and foil that out because it gets a little, I'm running out a little bit of space, but you needed to remember that it travels with its conjugate of I plus 1. Here, the 3i is going to have its buddy of negative 3i, and it's going to have its buddy of positive 2i. So you're going to have two things to multiply. And my hint here is it's always easiest to multiply the conjugates together. So here you're going to get x squared plus 9. When you multiply these two together, you should get x squared plus 4. Did I say square, squared and write a f thinking 4? x squared plus 4. And then foil those two together, x to the fourth plus 13, x squared plus 36. On this one, you need to solve. You set it equal to 0. Factor out of GCF. And I'm left with x minus 2. You have a multiplicity of 2. A lot of times you don't need to write both of those down. Okay. On here, I'd probably go ahead and factor out an x first. You're left with x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4. All right. Now, that didn't do a whole lot for us, but I think I'm going to try doing this one by grouping. I'm going to put those two together, and then I'm going to put those two together and look for a GCF. Well, if I put those two together, my GCF is x squared, and I'm going to be left with x plus 1. If I put those two together, my GCF is negative 4, and I'm left with x plus 1. So I have the same thing in the parentheses, so I can write down that parentheses. Now be left with x squared minus 4. So x plus 1, x plus 2, x minus 2, just factoring the G, or the difference of two squares. And I don't want to forget that GCF that I took out at the very beginning. So my answer is x equals 0 negative 1 plus or minus 2. On number 10, state if it's a binomial. I'm not going to do all of these. It's yes if your remainder equals 0. It's no if your remainder equals anything but 0. So here, I've set it up, I put 2 in the box, bring down the 1, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. My remainder is 0, so that would be a yes. Let's go ahead and do B just for fun. Bring down, multiply, add. Multiply, add, multiply, add. Oh, that's not going to be zero. So that would be a no. All right, on this one, 
you're going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals 5. Because you can't have any zero in the bottom. You're going to have a horizontal. Those are the same powers. Asymptote at y equals 1. I would probably just go ahead and do a t-table for time-wise. I'm just going to show it to you on Desmos. Here, we want to draw a third degree function with a negative leading coefficient. That means that you're going to have two turning points. Uh, my negative leading coefficient, so I'm going to start up and end down. So, and two turning points, three zeros. Um, here, it's impossible to do. Because no matter what, even if you draw it like that, with those arrows, it's still going to be crossing through the x-intercept at some point. So it's impossible to draw a cubic function that doesn't have any x-intercepts. Draw a quartic function. Well, a quartic would be fourth degree. With a positive leading coefficient, that means my end behavior is up, up. Pre-turning points. And you could have had some x-intercepts there if you wanted to. Uh, number 15. I know it's an inequality, but you just kind of have to think back to what you know. We know how to graph a quadratic. My zeros are negative 1 and 5. You can find the vertex opposite b over 2a. Oops. All right, I think that announcement was over. So back to this. You can find the vertex opposite b over 2a, and it's going to be a dotted line because it's just a less than. Easiest thing to do is put your pen on the vertex. It's less than, so you're going to shade down. That's outside of the um, quadratic. This is just old information that you should already have. It's just kind of a refresher to make sure that you kind of remember some things. On this one, what are the zeros? This is already factored for you. So your zeros are 0, 2, negative 2, and 6. Uh, on this one, your answer is the remainder. So you put 2 in the box, your coefficients are 1, 8, 2, looks like I'm going to have to put in some placeholders, so 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, none, use um, synthetic division, bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, Add, multiply, add, multiply, let's see, 2 times that would be 16, carry the 1, and then add. So your answer should be 180. All right, as I said, I went through this very quickly. I'm hoping that I did not make any mistakes. If so, I apologize. Have fun.